Behind every computer is an operating system. Perhaps the most well known of these operating systems is Windows, appearing in about 90% of all computers. It has been licensed to millions of computers all around the world. Though of course if you need to upgrade you have to pay for it and an upgrade is not all that cheap. Usually around $100 for just a home edition upgrade. And of course with Windows you have the fact that there are viruses on them. Then there is Mac OS. Clean, easy to use, secure, but it comes with an expensive, unexpensive computers. Sure, the upgrades are only about $20, $30 now, but the hardware starts at $500 for the Mac Mini uh, desktop computer, and not about $1,000 for the MacBook Air. If you're looking for an operating system that is free, not only in cost, but also freely free to be built upon and changed as it will unlike Windows or Mac OS. Look to Linux. Linux started out as the personal project of Linus Torvalds in the 1990s. Torvalds from Finland didn't want to name it Linux initially, but the name stuck after a friend of his gave it that name. Linux is not just one simple operating system. In fact, it is it has many different variants, which may seem confusing to you and me. In this video, I will con I'll tell you what are the best ways for you, a person like you or me, to get to access the power of Linux. Excuse me. I'll tell you about some of the more popular variants of Linux, about the Linux history of Linux itself. And what I would say are the best ways to go with Linux. Linux, as I mentioned, started out in the early 90s as a personal pet project of a man by the name of Linus Torvalds from Finland. He based it off of a OS called Minix, which in turn is based off of Unix, a you a kind of system that is made by uh, was developed by Bell Laboratories in the, 19, the late 1960s and early 70s and refined over the course of many years. These days Linux and Unix in general are the basis for many different sub operating systems and individual operating systems for Unix. Unix powers other systems like the BSDs, uh, even Mac OS X, and as well as um, a lot of different other systems that I can't really think of. But the only one that really doesn't use it, the only major one that doesn't really use it is Windows, which is based off a variation of DOS, or the Windows NT protocol if you're talking about more recent systems from XP onward. Anyways, let's continue on, shall we, about Linux. Linux is based off of something called the Linux kernel. A kernel is the very brown, the very foundation, I would say, that a operating system lies on. Many people build upon this uh, kernel until they get, make their own variation of Linux. Now, if you directly install the Linux kernel, you'll only get, like, a jumbled mess of, you know, command line stuff that you won't be able to understand. So, that's why there are many Linux distributions out there, especially in the past 10 to 15 years, made just for, you know, your desktop or laptop network, stuff like that. Um, before we continue on with that, there's also mobile Linux variations. You might be surprised that if you own an Android phone, if you're lucky enough to have, if you have to have a WebOS device, you actually ha you actually are running Linux as we speak. Yes, that's right. Android and WebOS are Linux-powered uh, operating systems. 
Uh, even though you really can't access some of the things that make Linux great, like for example, you know, the terminal, you can't access that, you can't access the kernel, it's its its own machine, so to say. Well, anyways, enough about mobile Linux, here we go without desktop Linux. Perhaps the biggest two schools of desktop Linux are the Red Hat school and the Debian school. Those two are named after their respective matrunk, so it's called trunk operating systems in each tree of, each school is a tree, so to say. Um, there's the Debian tree named after Debian, the Red Hat tree named after Red Hat. Uh, perhaps the most notable branches from Red Hat, from each tree are, for Red Hat, uh, something called Fedora, and from Debian, Ubuntu. Both were forks, or they were basically, they copied the source code or basis of each system and tweaked it to their own um, styles. That's what a fork is. Uh, and some, in case of Fedora, it was created as a more user-friendly variant of Red Hat, which is more of a text-based on it, so say. Whereas, um, Ubuntu was created by people who are kind of disgruntled at the way Debian was going. Um, currently, a variant of Ubuntu, uh, um, excuse me, Linux Mint, I'm sorry about the big pause there, um, currently has, currently has number one in this group, number one, most used um, according to a site called Distro, um, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's a certain website that measures how many hits it gets from certain distributions of Linux. Well, that is not really an accurate representation of things. I mean, you could say that really Ubuntu itself is the number one distribution of Linux. Um, that, and I think that is the case. I mean, I'm running a Ubuntu... I have a computer down here that runs Ubuntu, even though I'm not recording from it. Um, and it works quite fast. I mean, Linux in general... You install it, it running computer, it's quite fast. And many um, older computers, you can put a Linux variation on it, and it'll be as fast as it was when you first got it. In most cases... And in some cases, you know, in a lot of people's cases, after about a year or so of using Linux, it runs as fast as they want. And that is pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> so that's fantastic. Anyways, an interesting, anyways, a couple of misconceptions about Linux. Uh, first off, uh, Again, it's a lot more user-friendly than most people think it is. Um, if you use Ubuntu, you get something called Unity, which is a very simple, easy-to-use, Mac OS-like interface. Um, there's also different interfaces, what I call the Big Four interfaces. Uh, GNOME, which is kind of, l which is kind of, in some case, in its classic mode, more of a you know, halfway between Windows and Mac o and classic Mac OS uh, with a more modern look to it. And then you have, and then you have more modern version of GNOME, the GNOME shell, um, which is a lot more, you know, its own kind of thing. It has a kind of a very unique little dock kind of thing in the top right hand corner called activities, you click it, a lot of all your stuff appears. It's very easy to use. Anyways, um, then there is KDE. If it's a bit more full featured than uh, GNOME, uh, it's more of a full desktop experience, and it is very, so to say, similar to Windows, especially Windows 7, if you, or at least XP. I mean Vista, excuse me. Very similar to Windows Vista. In its appearances, 
but it has its own unique look to it as well. So it's a bit more full featured, but it's very easy to use. Uh, and then now the light light ones, uh, XFDE and uh, hold on, let me let me check here. Um, I'm not sure what they were, but I think they're called. Right, here they are. Um, XFCE and X, I mean LXDE. Um, all of them are based on something called X11, uh, which is for a lot of Unix-based um, operating systems, like the many variants of Linux. It is the very ground of a of a GUI um, or graphical Unix user interfaces. Excuse me, graphical user interfaces. Anyways. Anyway, so that is pretty. So it's e so all of them are pretty easy to use. Another thing is that since Windows has a lot of viruses and anybody can make things for Linux, well, there are a lot of viruses for Linux. I'm saying, I'm just saying, no, there are a lot of viruses for Linux. In fact, there are very few. You see, Linux is based again off of Unix, which is a very secure system, and it's very hard even to write a malicious virus, even. Writing one is pretty, as I mentioned, it's pretty difficult. I mean, you know, it's just that way. And the cool part about it is that same thing goes for any other Unix-based systems, like the BSDs. Uh, the one I forgot to mention was the Solaris line, uh, Solaris, Open Solaris, Open Indiana, stuff like that. And uh, also, of course, Mac OS X. And iOS, which for, which you'll never see a virus for iOS because its app store is very very tight controlled. Except if of course if you jailbreak it, you know, and all of a sudden the virus app appears on Cydia, which is the app store for jailbroken devices. Anyways, another really unusual thing people are claiming about Linux is that, you know, you know, if you're used to Windows, you'll never be used to it, but no, you can't. In fact, you don't have to immediately replace it, you know, right out of the get-go. You can simply, a lot of you simply make a CD, and some of, most of these CDs are live CDs. That means you can actually run the system directly from the CD and without changing anything on your computer. So that is pretty neat. Um, Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu, um, all the, a lot of different kinds of operating systems like that. A lot of Linux systems use this kind of system called open, uh, I mean live CDs, that is fantastic. Pretty neat. So um, that's a simple, if a bit fragmented, um, explainer about Linux in under 15 minutes. So this has been Jacob Smith, if here, um, for Lead Student News and my own account, Davik USA. So see you later.